Welcome to section 5.1. All right, gentle people, in this lecture, we're going to begin our discussion on gases. Now, gases is kind of a favorite state of matter to many scientists. And that's because when you look at gases, you can envision a gas molecule as an isolated particle. When someone studies a gas, the characteristics that they measure is not going to be interfered by bulk properties, meaning the interaction between other molecules are largely ignored. Now, some things to say about gases is that gases assume the volume and shape of their containers. They are the most compressible state of matter. And when I have a gas, I get even mixing and even dispersion. And this is another characteristic that make gases so favorable to study. Now, speaking of characteristics, what chemists and scientists like to do is describe the state a gas is in. And so what that means is, is we examine certain factors and tell you the condition the gas molecules are going to be in. The characteristics that we're going to be studying in this chapter are the relationship between pressure, volume, temperature, and we're going to go ahead and invoke the number of moles as well. Now, temperature, which is abbreviated with a capital T, is something that we're going to be talking about a little bit later. Volume, which is abbreviated with a capital V, well, you guys already have experienced volume. This is just the amount of space matter takes up. Now, pressure is something that I want to go ahead and delve a little bit into. So if we look at the physics definition of pressure, pressure is going to be the force over an area. Now, if I look at area, what I can envision is I can envision a wall of some sort and force is going to be something pushing against that wall. Now, the way that I want you guys to think of gas molecules is I want you to think of them as randomly ricocheting particles. Now, these particles are going to bounce around and what's going to happen is they are going to impact the surface of our container. Now, this impact is going to be the source of the force on this area. And so, in other words, the pressure is due to the collision of gas particles against a surface. Now, the official unit of pressure is one newton per meter squared. This is what's called a pascal. Now, a pascal is a really small unit and sometimes inconvenient for everyday calculations. To give you an example, our atmosphere is about 100,000 Pascal. So we're going to go ahead and stick with the units of atmosphere. Now, an atmosphere is equivalent to 760 millimeters mercury or 760 tor. Now, I will give you these conversion units on your information sheet. But let's kind of explore what some of these mean and the consequence of pressure. So what I'm going to do is a little thought experiment. I'm going to go ahead and get this bowl. And in this bowl, I'm going to fill it with liquid mercury. Now, mercury is a very heavy, heavy liquid. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this mercury in this bowl. And like any other liquid, it finds its level and it's just going to rest in the bottom of this bowl. Now, into this bowl, I'm going to go ahead and put a tube. Now, the tube is going to be evacuated or it is going to be under a vacuum. Now, when I say vacuum, that means I have zero things in there or I have zero pressure in the tube. Now, remember what pressure is. It is a force over an area. So if I have a vacuum here, there is nothing pushing down. If I were to put this tube in this pool of mercury, what I know is that the atmosphere is filled with gas. This gas exerts a pressure. And so that pressure or that push is going to push against my liquid mercury. It's going to start pushing that liquid. And because there is nothing in this vacuum tube to push down, what you guys will see is the mercury is going to start to rise in this tube. 
Now it's going to rise to a certain level before gravity starts to take over, and that level happens to be 760 millimeters. And that's where we get this designation millimeters mercury. It would be the actual height mercury would travel up an evacuated tube. This is how straws work. When you go ahead and put your lips against a straw, you are evacuating it by sucking the air out of the straw. Now you might think that you're sucking up the liquid, but in fact what is happening is the atmospheric pressure is pushing down on your liquid and it is being pushed to your mouth. So let's go ahead and talk about measuring pressure. One common device is something called a manometer. So what a manometer is going to do is I'm going to have this tube and I'm going to have this tube in a U shape. Now I'm going to go ahead and fill mercury in this tube. Now if nothing is pushing down on this mercury, well the mercury would be at an even level. Now what I can do is I can take this tube of mercury in this U shape and connect it to so let's say that I go ahead and connect it to a gas. So let's say this picture right here. Now this is my sample gas that I want to go ahead and measure the pressure of. Now on the other side of my mercury tube, I'm going to go ahead and have a vacuum. And so remember what happens here. The vacuum does not have any push. There's no pressure because there's no gas molecules colliding with my liquid mercury to push it down. However, my sample gas, well, it has gas particles. They're gonna go ahead and collide with the mercury. And when they collide with the mercury, they exert a pressure. And so they're going to push the mercury. And so I'm gonna get this pressure being built up and so that is going to drive the mercury up the tube. Now, if I were to measure this height difference between this level and this level of mercury, well, that would be the pressure of my gas. And this would have units of millimeters mercury. Now, a vacuum is sometimes a hard thing to maintain. So sometimes what people do is they go ahead and have this opened up to the atmosphere and they know what the atmospheric pressure is. So let's take a look at this situation. In this picture, I don't have a vacuum. Instead, I'm open to the atmosphere. And so remember, the atmosphere or the air around you is filled with gas particles. Those gas particles are going to push down. And so what I'm going to have is a pressure due to my atmosphere. So again, I want to try to measure my sample gas. My gas has gas particles, and it's going to apply a pressure P gas. Now let's go ahead and think of this. If my gas pressure and my atmospheric pressure was equal, then my mercury would be pushed equally by both sides, and so my level in my mercury would be even because it's being pushed evenly on both sides. And so if I have that scenario, where the mercury level is even, well then that would be the pressure of the gas will equal the pressure of the atmosphere. Now, what you see in this picture is that they are not even, but instead that the gas is pushing the mercury towards my atmosphere side. And so what that means is it has an additional force to drive up that mercury a certain height. So in this case, the pressure of the gas equals the atmospheric pressure plus the height difference in my mercury levels. Why don't you guys go ahead and take this quiz and try to write down what the pressure would be if I had this picture shown to you on the right hand side. Again, I'm open to the atmosphere here. Okay, so to remind you, if my mercury levels were even here, what I can say is that the pressure of the gas equals the pressure of the atmosphere. But what I see here is that the mercury is rising on the gas side. What that means is that the gas has less pressure than the atmosphere. 
And so what's happening here is that the atmosphere is pushing against the pressure of the gas and it is also driving the mercury up a certain height. So what I can say is the height plus the pressure of the gas equals the pressure of the atmosphere. But if I just wanted the pressure of the gas, I'll go ahead and subtract the height from both sides. So when you do manometer type of problems, you always have to look at which side the mercury is higher on. That is going to tell you which side has the higher pressure. Well, I hope that made sense and remember to stay safe, Chem1A.